little chicks before presents. The play boy that we all review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon C64 Play Guide and Review. This week we'll be checking out three games, beginning with CJ's Elephant Antics, developed by Genesis Software and released by Cold Masters early in 1991. You can see the game begins with a great loading picture and it also includes a basic introductory animation. In this game we play as CJ the Elephant, who has been kidnapped from Africa and taken by a plane to France, where he then leaps out and he has to make his way back to Africa via France, Switzerland, Egypt and finally Africa itself. So much for the animated storyline, let's load up that game and let's check that out. <laughs> The game begins with some slightly annoying cutesy music, but this great introduction reveals some stills from the game, and you may see code masters without the space, unlike the intro loading screen, and you can see that this game has been polished enough to create an arcade style introduction, and the aim of this game is of course to traverse all four levels in the game and it's a pity that there are only four levels but those are quite large not as large as Turrican. From the title screen we can always select two player mode and two players will be on the same screen at the very same time which leads to hectic mayhem but for this let's check out that one player mode. very start of the game it's easy to lose a life straight away simply by the frogs that you find on virtually the very first screen. Luckily the player can press Q at any point to return to the title page and if you've lost a life straight away I'd probably recommend doing that. It's perhaps very easy to kill these three frogs ordinarily and you have to rush to collect those bombs before they disappear but by luring those things down the screen hopefully you can take those frogs on or if you jump up you can actually launch well you're supposed to be able to launch a bomb mid jump and that gets rid of it and yes I have just lost another life on the very first screen of this game but let's persevere and let's see how far we can get I used to be able to complete this game but not sadly anymore the enemies will always release some kind of pickup. Sometimes that's a bonus in the shape of fruit or a cake, but sometimes it's a flashing object which is invulnerability, and sometimes we can collect extra bombs. By pulling back on our controller, we can launch a bomb, and by jumping and pulling back, we can throw that in the air. If we make contact with spikes, we'll die, but when we die, we are given certain invulnerability. And look at that, the bomb simply bouncing off the roof, and that dangerous, pathetic poodle kills us anyway. So, being attacked by snails and frogs and poodles by a massive, monstrous elephant throwing bombs around isn't particularly ideal, and you would have thought that you can simply jump on these guys' heads to knock them out. Unfair deaths can really pile up as the player tries to play this, but you saw I managed to pick up a flashing object that was an invulnerability pill, and that meant that the cloud, which would have wiped yet another life, was defeated. And we can remain invulnerable for some time, and it's great we can take on these enemies and reveal those collectibles. It's certainly better than other games, which doesn't, and it means we can rush through that level and take these enemies on gung ho. See, we are passing the monument of the Eiffel Tower and other landmarks, which remind us that we are in Paris, and poodles and frogs and snails, of course. This 
point, the game gives the player multiple routes around the level, and sometimes it's best to choose your route wisely. Note these frogs aren't usually a problem if you get enough shots of peanuts in there fired from your trunk. But sometimes if you go the low way, just like this, take on a few of those enemies if you have the bombs. And sometimes it's even possible to run underneath enemies, although I wouldn't recommend that. At the end of the level, we get to face the hunchback of Notre Dame, Notre Dame, and you can see that that thing fires spitballs towards us, and what we have to do is to ascend that place on the level, and hopefully if we get close to that thing, we can lob a bomb into that, and I think it takes four bombs to blow it up, or, well, maybe 50 peanuts if you are doing that the long way. That's the second bomb launched, and it didn't even scratch him, so we have to get those closer to target. And that one sunk, he certainly felt that one, so hopefully with one more bomb, it should be possible to knock him out. And he drops a map, which takes us on to the next level via a bonus stage. who's seen Kickstart on the Commodore 16 Plus 4 machine developed by Sean Southern may have an idea of this game. It's a very simple bike game where you cannot touch anything except for the balloons which will give us a bonus and all you have to do is to keep jumping, avoid everything and make your way along this linear bonus stage to the end of the level and unfortunately I fell over the final spike and that puts us over the border into Switzerland. It's surprising that a penguin takes more than just a few hits to knock out and that's wiped out yet another life. And here the leaps of faith. Are we going to fire spikes down here? Yes we are, so unless the player has played this before, they will probably not know which way to go. And falling into instant death is not very helpful when the snowmen can fire directly towards us and you have to watch out for all those unfairnesses in order to enjoy this game. Yes, I did used to enjoy this game, and I played this until I became so good I could complete it, but having come back to this over so many years, I find that the monsters and the critters involved are relentless, and you might think that those things on the roof are decoration, but no, they are ice spikes, and they will kill us on contact. So I think the unfairness is in this game where you pile up and it becomes like a Rick Dangerous game where the player has to memorise every single spot and then they can get through it safely given there is in fact no time limit. A year later the same team came back with a sequel known as CJ in the USA or CJ2 perhaps and here we can also change the players and the music but those are the only options on the title page. We are in America, we now get some bluegrass, except this time that we find ourselves in the bottom of a ship and we have to escape from the entire ship, which is taking us back to America. We have to get through America and find our way back to Africa the hard way. I really enjoyed the original, I rushed out and bought CJ2, unfortunately CJ2 is devilish and of course we can die needlessly just from those ridiculous puzzles and you have to avoid everything of course and sometimes you go down dead ends in this game and those splits which are supposed to help the player actually hinder them so as you see me walking down a complete dead end, I'll just tell you that the CJ's games, at least one and two, were both coded by Dave Clark. No, not the same one from the Dave Clark 5, but Dave Clark was responsible for Spiky in Transylvania, which appeared in 1991. Both of the CJ's games and of course Nobby the Aardvark, which appeared in 1992. These 
quite plain levels are designed by the graphics from Jonathan Smythe and Jonathan Smythe also created graphics for Stuntman Seymour in 92 and Dizzy Panic which was a 91 game and Bubble Dizzy in 92 so those guys creating games and graphics for Cold Masters. <laughs> Great music in the first game and this pretty horrible music in the second game was created by Ashley Hogg and he also created the music for Spike in Transylvania, Nob the Oidvark, both of the CJ's games and Steg the Slug which appeared again in 1992. I think this music reminds me of a fairground rather than a boat in which we must escape from and that music disappears halfway through that level and the player will have to play this in absolute silence. I think this game really suffers from the Rick Dangerous behaviour, which means that we have to know where we are going and we have to have played this game multiple times. And yes, I did try to jump off the bridge of that platform and still ran straight into that water. And sometimes you can be very lucky with enemies, but of course sometimes you can't. And now let's skip on to the final game in the CJ's trilogy. This is actually known as CJ4. Or on Lemon 64 you can see that is CJ's fourth and whatever this is actually a fan tribute to the CJ series. CJ3, CJ in Space was never actually released and this CJ4 never actually released officially is what I'm actually playing right now. And this was found on the 64 games that weren't website and as you can see the graphics have certainly been updated in this updated release of course this was released many years later and the music isn't bad either and of course our regular CJ character who can jump around and kill all these enemies CJ's fourth was originally developed in 1984 and that is licensed to Codemasters, not actually sure whether that actually got released, and was also released under the name Jumbo. You can see the graphics for 1984 are great and remind me of the Creatures series, and the playability on offer is certainly much, much easier than any of the two previous CJ games. Think this game plays even easier than the Creatures game and I have to say above everything the one thing that spoils this game is the difficulty curve and that's because the difficulty curve does not exist. The player as long as they are careful can romp through these levels and they can complete this game first time on the very first try simply by taking their time and I don't really like to do that so you will see me trying to rush through these levels. The first level is very colourful and tricky timing is really needed to be observed since the player can jump and turn in midair so they can land on virtually any platform and as long as they avoid these easy bombs thrown down by those ridiculously stupid snails then they can get through this ridiculously easy level. The fourth isn't a bad game, certainly not bad music or graphics, and it's not coded very badly. And you could liken this to the great Kiana Sisters, perhaps, and all those other great games that we enjoyed on the Commodore 64. But this game feels like a magazine cover tape release, given that the difficulty factor is probably for four year olds. And by the time I got to play this in 1994, I was actually quite some years older than four year old, so I didn't actually bother with it. Still, to this day, CJ1 is the best of the series and requires some healthy respect. CJ1 was 
CJ2 is just a menace and requires absolutely no respect. And the CJ4, well, apart from the graphics being okay and it being very easy, there isn't really much to say about this and it gets pretty boring pretty quickly. Eventually, at the end of the level, we find a teleport, or that could be an elephant trap, and just like Rick Dangerous, we can choose our level. Let's, well, we have completed level one, but there is no X against that, so let's choose the second level, which necessitates another slip slidey ice world. Only, as far as I know, you don't slip slide, but you can move on those conveyors you can see on the floor, and the return of those lethal spikes. This game bland seems a little unreasonable, but unfortunately I'm not finding much enjoyment with it. So let's just move on to those scores for the original CJ game. The lowest score for this is currently on the Lemon C64 website, who gave this 7.6, which is 76%, and that doesn't sound much, even though there were quite a few positive comments for it. Next we have your Commodore who gave the original CJ 91%, Commodore Format gave the original CJ 91%, Commodore Force gave it 93%, and Zap gave the original CJ an amazing 94%. With the Lemon 64 score that brings the average down to 8.5 out of 10. Certainly the famous CJ games are popular on the C64 and I'd certainly recommend players try these out. It's not easy and it's not an absolute pushover until you get to CJ4, which this is, and you can see that the character is well animated and can fire instead of peanuts, it looks like heavy machine gun fire or some kind of missile on this game. And look at that, I'm simply running through it healthy leather because I can't bother to play it. But thank you once again for viewing another Lemon C64 play guide and review. Hope to see you again sometime soon.